Chapter 6, The Changing Face of Education, Teaching Online The PK-12 through education community has used a time-tested face-to-face instructional model for teaching students. The face-to-face teaching model is being transformed as educators develop new strategies to create innovative opportunities to educate students along any path, any time, at any pace, and from any place. Malcolm Gladwell defined the tipping point as the levels at which the momentum for change becomes unstoppable. Web 2.0 and communication tools have brought a renewed interest in changing the dynamics of instruction by creating new paths for change and growth. These new educational technologies are spreading rapidly as teachers become more comfortable with the tools that their students already embrace. Web 2.0 social networking tools and games have become a mainstay in our everyday lives and now in K-12 education, especially distance education. Distance education, also called distance learning and distributed learning, is defined as the delivery of instruction from one location to another, which means that the teaching takes place in one location and the learning takes place at another location. A web-based course, often called an online course or an e-learning course, is a course delivered via the web, rather than a traditional brick-and-mortar classroom. Online education may be synchronous, asynchronous, instructor-led, self-paced, or a combination of all of these. Synchronous is a direct form of communication in which communication happens in real time where parties involved are present at the same time. Asynchronous is when communications occur at different times, and it does not require that parties be present at the same time. Instructor-led refers to courses in which the instruction is directed by an instructor teaching the class online, whereas self-paced refers to courses in which the learner goes through the course at his or her own pace. Today, all federal and state governments, most local governments, as well as many business and organizations in the United States, provide employees with some type of web-based training in order to teach new skills or upgrade current skills. Distance education, especially web-based training, is a cost-efficient and effective way to keep their employees up to date. Today, thousands of online classes are available in virtually all disciplines, and millions of undergraduate and graduate students take online classes every term. Web-based courses allow students to attend class from home or other locations at any time that fits their schedule. Many colleges and universities now offer advanced degrees, including doctorate degrees, in which all required courses are offered online. A number of fully accredited universities no longer provide traditional courses. Instead, 100% of their courses and degrees are provided online. For example, Walden University is one of the leading fully accredited 100% online universities in the world. Most, if not all, states are now providing web-based or online courses for their pre-K through 12 school students. At this educational level, the majority of web-based courses are offered to help provide an alternative learning solution and instruction for homebound students. In some cases, Web-based courses also allow less populated districts and schools in rural areas to share teachers and to provide access to courses they would not otherwise be able to offer their students. In addition to fully web-based courses, many teachers are web-enhancing their classes. Teachers web-enhance their classes by creating tools such as websites and curriculum resource pages. The web-enhanced tools provide students with resources to enrich their learning experience. A virtual school differs from the traditional school by offering all student services, instruction, activities, communication, and courses online using internet technology. Virtual schools use the internet to link the complete school organization. This includes the connections between administrators, teachers, parents, and students. Blended learning, also called hybrid learning or mixed mode learning, combines traditional classroom-based face-to-face courses with some type of e-learning instruction. Blended learning is increasing in many areas of education and is one of the fastest growing uses of technologies in the world. There are many practical reasons that blended learning is gaining acceptance, such as budget cuts, cost effectiveness, instructional offerings, and gains in student learning. 
Research has shown that many of the difficulties students experience during the learning process diminish when their education environments are modified to their pace and levels of learning. What adds to this type of teaching and learning is the technology component inherent in the blended learning environment, where technology is not a distraction from learning, but rather it is an integral part of the learning process. Creating high-quality blended learning pre presents considerable opportunities and challenges for both teachers and students. Evaluating educational technology involves determining if the technology is appropriate and enhances the teaching and learning process. To be considered appropriate, the educational technology must be suitable for the educational situation, must be motivational, and must promote learning at the correct levels of student ability and academic achievement. It also must address curriculum standards and related learning objectives. Evaluating educational technology before instruction begins, during the instructional period, and after the instruction has taken place is important. Teachers should continue to evaluate the technology while it's being used, as well as after the instruction using the technology is complete. Teachers might rely on a variety of resources to help them identify and evaluate the appropriateness of education technologies. These resources include material from school districts, state departments of education, professional education organizations, recommendations of colleagues, published evaluations, including app reviews, technology conferences, and websites. When integrating technology, some teachers and schools move toward a non-traditional approach of student assessment, known as alternative assessment. Alternative assessment uses non-traditional methods to determine whether students have mastered the appropriate content and skill level. Authentic assessment, project-based assessment, portfolio assessment, as well as check checklists, rating scales, rubrics, are alternative ways to evaluate student performances. Authentic assessment can be formal or informal and aims to present students with tasks that mirror the objectives and challenges typical of their instructional activities. Students answer open-ended questions, create questions, conduct hands-on experiments, do research, write, revise, discuss papers, and create portfolios of their work over time. Project-based assessment is an innovative approach to assessment that focuses on assessing students' projects. Project-based learning is a model for teaching and learning that focuses on creating learning opportunities for students by engaging them in real-world projects where they have an active role in completing meaningful tasks, constructing their own knowledge, solving problems, or creating realistic projects. Portfolio assessment evaluates students' assignments or projects over a period of time. Portfolios are an effective way to match assessment with learning goals. A checklist is a predetermined list of performance criteria used in project-based and portfolio assessment. Checklists usually consist of yes and no questions used to determine if the item or items are present. A rating scale is a more complex form of a checklist that lists a numerical value or rating for each criterion. Rubrics help students understand how teachers will evaluate their projects by providing a range of criteria with information about how to meet each one. To help meet the constant challenge of motivating students to learn, teachers must change their traditional roles and become facilitators of learning. Technology plays a key role in easing this change because it allows teachers to use technology tools to enhance the learning environment, motivate students, guide students in a participatory learning process, and encourage them to learn. The most effective way to integrate technology is to place the technology at the point of instruction, the classroom. Because of the ever-increasing need to motivate students to learn, teachers have a mandate to use the powerful tools of technology to enhance the learning environment of today's digital students.